All right, we are live. Woohoo. So let's put in the comments if you can hear me and see me. <laughs> Sometimes LinkedIn is not the best when it comes to um, basically the lives, not the most user friendly, but I am live and I think I see folks who have joined. So just a reminder, what we're doing today is we are looking at different LinkedIn profiles and people will get the opportunity to um, get feedback on their profile. And I actually see a few people backstage. Shayla, I see you. I am bringing you in with me. I'm adding you to the stream. So get ready. Okay. Yay. There you are. <laughs> exciting. How exciting. So you are one of my eager folks who um, wants to get feedback on their LinkedIn profile. And uh, why don't you do me a favor and post in the comments the link to your LinkedIn profile and let's just dive right into it. Okay. That sounds very exciting. One <laughs> second. <laughs> no pressure at all being the first one, right? No, no pressure. There's nothing <laughs> to worry about. I'm doing the teaching here. You, you just sit back and relax. <laughs> All right, so I'm trying to drop in the live chat. Oh, there it is, okay. Wonderful. So um, just a reminder, we are looking at LinkedIn profiles and let me see if I can actually share my screen and go through your LinkedIn profile. Okay, so share screen. Um, there we go. All right. Yay, everyone can see this. All right, Shayla. So I'm looking at your LinkedIn profile. And the first thing that I wanna ask you is, what is your ideal job? What are you trying to get into? Yeah, so my idle job is product management. Um, I am transitioning from education right now. And so I'm, of course, open for an entry level position, but I do want to make that transition into product. And I'm, I'm leaving the operations side of education, just to kind of clarify. Okay, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. So I'm going to start from the top. The first thing that I'm seeing here is your heading, right? So from a, um, so when we, when we talk about LinkedIn profiles, there are two things that we need to focus on. We need to focus on you being found by recruiters and then getting recruiters to stay on your profile. Now, from a searchability perspective, one of the biggest um, things about being found is remembering what recruiters search on. So recruiters will search on product manager and um, where that is picked up is generally in your heading. Um, it is also picked up from your about section, which is missing. We got to add that. And then the third thing is from your experiences. So the first thing that I would do, Shayla, is update your heading. Um, now, I totally understand that you're not officially a product manager. So something that you could do is you could put in product manager, vertical line, assistant principal of operations at, you know, your company name. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that you could do. Were you unofficially in a way um, building, designing, um, are involved in some kind of product development? I have a little bit of product experience. I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually trying to work through building a portfolio. I have to kind of think through um, the projects that I have been a part of, but yeah, there's, there's a few in there I could probably squeeze out. 
So when you were, for example, um, in your role as, a, as an assistant principal of operations, mm -hmm. were there any tangible products or outcomes that, that come out of it? I think just off the top of my head right now, I think most of it just has been in problem solving um, like apps or programs that we're currently using by teachers and just me jumping in and trying to rectify whatever issue that they have going on. Oh, apps and things like that. Were mm -hmm. you involved in um, improving those features in the apps? To a certain extent, I think um, my role was more so on their ability to use certain functions. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would have to dig into it a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, definitely recommend that that you look into roles that are adjacent to product, not necessarily um, product manager, because it doesn't sound like um, you technically designed or built any or launched any products, right? Right. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, I would definitely look at product adjacent roles. If you go and search on product, um, you can you can take a look at some um, in, in Google Jobs. You can take a look at basically product adjacent roles. And um, yes, product specialist is definitely a good one. And if you go into Google Jobs, and I'm going to do a quick demo here. Let's say product and jobs. I'm just going to put New York City just for fun, right? Um, you will find, um, you know, you can even put product and ed tech because you are in the space of education. Mm -hmm. um, and you can look at basically um, product adjacent roles. But um, going by Marina's suggestion, putting in even product specialist or product analyst, right? Um, product uh, let's see product specialist I'm just gonna put in New York City just because there are more roles in New York City you can see there's business product specialist um, junior product specialist lots of the, those roles but the key thing here that I wanted to drive for a lot of people especially when it comes to branding is you really need to be clear about what your ideal job and that is something that you need to nail before you do your branding. So let us, you know, go with the hypothesis of product analyst, or let's even go with product specialist, because I totally love that. And um, there's a lot of roles out there that show that. Um, it and, and as you go through it, you may actually find that there's a lot of transferable skills or things that you're already doing, especially around relationship management mm -hmm. and things like that. You're already doing a lot of relationship management. So let's talk about product specialist. Um, that's more believable. And that's the thing, everyone. Sometimes people just put in titles for the sake of titles and it actually reduces your credibility because it's one thing. Yeah, sure. You can appear in the search results, but if a recruiter starts reading, you know, your title and the experience just de doesn't add up, then they're just not going to, they're not going to contact you. Okay. So, um, I would definitely, um, you know, um, find what that ideal job, but let's, let's hypothesize and say product specialist is a good one. Um, and I'm still not buying the associate product manager either because, even as an associate product manager, there is that involvement in building digital features. And because you didn't do that, it's really going to be hard for you to bend your experiences and make that convincing. Mm -hmm. So let's go with product specialists just because there is that um, relationship aspect, which you're already doing in your role and working with um, cross-functional partners, you know, doing all that stuff. Um, I would put in product specialist, vertical line, and then I would put in assistant principal of operations. Okay, so that's um, one thing you could do to improve your chances. The second thing is you um, you got to have a banner. 
the banner is not necessarily a factor to you being found. Um, it's more around when a recruiter lands on your profile, that's the first thing they're going to see and you got to hook them. So here's what I would advise you to do. And this is probably um, contradictory to what many people think. Um, the first thing that people will say, put a banner that talks about product. Put a banner that talks about you being a pro, uh, in the product world. Um, I would that if you do that, that's actually going to create issues with your current employer, where they're going to start wondering: Is she going to leave if they see that? Right. Mm -hmm. um, it also will tell recruiters that you're trying to leave, and recruiters actually favor poaching someone who's happily employed, who's not desperately looking. So the best way to do that is show that you're proud of being where you're at and have a banner that reflects your current organization. So if there is marketing material or if you go on maybe their LinkedIn profile, if we go on here, let's see if they have a good banner that you could use. Um, I mean, maybe um, something sort of um, more aligned with ed tech, something digital, um, you could use that, you know, maybe a product or an app that your, you know, organization is using, mm -hmm. um, still related to product, but it also speaks to the work that you do at, at the school. Um, I would use that as the banner. You can use Canva. Canva is amazing, is an amazing tool for that. Yeah. Um, and very easy to kind of use, um, you actually can choose the dimensions um, and select from Canva, um, basically um, LinkedIn um, banner, um, and uh, you can just pull something together that way. Okay, so we talked about the banner, we talked about the heading. Um, the, the photo looks pretty good. Um, I love that you're you're you know you have a huge smile. You're very approachable. It really is a wonderful photo. So I think the photo is fine. Um, it also shows your face. It is square to the camera. So I'm totally fine with your photo. Now we get into the experiences. So there aren't any descriptions in your experiences. So it's hard for a recruiter to know what exactly you did. Um, and that is something that I do with my clients in terms of um, describing their roles and responsibilities in the language of the avatar that they're transitioning into. So I would definitely look at product specialist job posting if that's a direction that you end up going into and think about how your current experiences map, you know, to basically those roles and responsibilities along with putting some achievements to quantify the impact. In terms of titles, I would use the vertical line. So even though officially you were an assistant principal of operations, um, it sounds like you were a specialist in whatever products, right? Your, your um, organization offers. Mm -hmm. So then you can put, play with that and put in vertical line product specialist, um, vertical line product specialist. That way, um, your chances of being found, you know, are going to increase. Okay. Wonderful. But I feel like the biggest blocker is just nailing what that ideal job is. Because mm -hmm. when that is not clear, it's really hard for us to convey to hiring managers. Um, how do I call this? Um, our brand and convince them. Okay, super. Yeah. Thank you so much for being a sport. Thank you. That was great. <laughs> I really appreciate that. All right. So I'm going to put you back in backstage. Okay. Um, there we go. And um, all right. Okay. Let's see who wants to go next. So plop in the chat if you want to go next. Um, if you are not on the um, basically backstage and you want to get feedback on your profile, I'm going to just drop the link in the um, 
in LinkedIn. Let me see if I can do that real quick. Okay, there we go. For anyone who wants to join basically backstage, but let's see who else is on in uh, backstage. Um, I see Jenny, I see Gabrielle. Um, who wants to sort, who wants to go next? Whoever puts in the comments that they want to go next first gets to go next. Or you can unmute yourself and say if you want to go next. All right. I see Magda. Magda, are you able to join the link that I just dropped, the StreamYard.com link? In the meantime, I'm going to pull up your LinkedIn profile. But uh, yeah, it would be helpful if you can come backstage Can you hear me, Magda? Okay, so while you're while you're figuring it out, and I'm gonna again drop the link. Um, so let's see if we can copy paste the link. It is the StreamYard link. Um, wonderful. Okay, so as you're trying. I also see um, Nosa. You're you're there. Do you wanna do you wanna get the profile review? I know you're getting all shy. I'm, okay. Should I add you to the stream or not? <laughs> yes. Nod your head if it's a yes. <laughs> okay. There we go. Welcome, my friend. How are you doing? I am well. How are you? Great. Great. Are you ready? Yeah, ready as can be. All right. So I'm going to pull up your LinkedIn and then we're going to go through it together. Uh, let us see if I can. Okay. Add I'm just going to drop it in the chat. Okay. You got there it. There we go. I got it. Okay. Um, all right. Why don't you tell us a little bit more around what you're trying to pivot into? So background is in hospitality or in the hospitality industry. I've done projects, events, all of that, and um, looking to pivot into the agile space, not necessarily tech, even though that was mm -hmm. the original goal, but um, something agile where I can add value in terms of project management, but it could also be, you know, in, in the hospitality sector as well. So, but I just completed my um, CSM. So I have a certified uh, Scrum Master certificate. And so that's there. Okay. Um, I am wondering, since a lot of the work that you've done was event management, mm -hmm. um, I, I totally, okay, so let's, let's, let's take a, let's take a pause from the event management stuff. Um, were there, um, were there um, basically um, with the U.S. Department of Commerce, did you work with any development teams or were you exposed in any shape or form in terms of um, building digital software, digital products in any way? No, it was more so processes with the um, uh, Census Bureau. With the North Central Texas Development Center, the one prior to that, mm -hmm. um, again, I've done more processes. And yeah. you know, with that role, I supported small businesses and then connected mm -hmm. them with teams that either did research on financing or feasibility studies, things like that. So there were development teams, but not software related. Gotcha. When you say development teams, what do you mean? What, what were they doing? So with um, uh, the NCTC one, so for example, there's a team that handles reviewing their business plan, doing the feasibility study, you know, and the clients that came to us were either existing business owners 
or new business owners, existing business owners were those who were dealing with post-COVID, trying to figure out, you know, the status of their business, all of that, or the health, I should say, of their business. And so my role was to support and advise them as to how to pivot their business from one level to another. And then there would be a team that does research on, say, I, for example, there was a business that I supported that opened a bridal salon in Plano. And so there was a team that did uh, research on, you know, stores in Plano. What has the, you know, last 10 years done? People who have been in the same industry, what has that track record been? What is the profit margin? Things like that. And then there's another team when they got to stage three that I connected them with, with senior business analysts and they handled, you know, their um, business plan if they needed to get a loan, how they could document everything for the bank to review. Okay. What attracted you the most about being a scrum master? It's creating a system and a process. So I'm always going to say that, like <laughs> this whole thing about being an event manager, I feel like your archetype is towards the process for sure, your career archetype. And is it more about empowering the people or is it more about using process to build an outcome for people? Definitely empowering the people and at the same time establishing relationships. I'm a big relationship driven person. Okay. I told, okay. Okay, cool. So it's on the people and process side of things. That's your career archetype. And I can totally see how that's transferable to a scrum master and why you got attracted to that role so much. Um, now the challenge of, with this, and I'm very realistic with people, I'm not about selling fluff to people. Mm -hmm. um, totally support people's dreams, but I'm, I also believe that dreams don't get achieved overnight. And, and this is where we bring in the agility about incremental progress, right? Transitioning step by step. So I think what really excites you is um, the organization aspect for sure, putting in systems and structures to help teams become very effective and basically deliver outcomes. There are roles out there that can be a foot in the door. Um, so I, I need you to think for a moment, would you care if that involved digital software um, or as long as you helped basically teams um, and, and enabled them with the right process, you're happy? Definitely the latter. I could care so much, <laughs> like zero about <laughs> Okay. <laughs> So here's here's the deal, right? As a scrum master, it is very much like it has to be about building software. It has to be about building digital products. So I'm wondering if there is openness in terms of looking at other roles where you can still leverage your, your agility and apply it, but it doesn't have to be about building digital products. So I can definitely see you as a program manager. And again, it could be it could be in the software space or it doesn't have to be in the software space. And it could be an intermediary step towards Scrum Master. But mm -hmm. I would say first get your foot in the door in a tech role. Um, program manager, project manager um, are, is still a great role. And you could be a different type of program manager, project manager, where you're still incorporating agility right? Mm -hmm. But you need an opportunity where you're practicing in a and working with digital developers in order to get into that scrum master role. Because without that, it's really going to be difficult for you going in, into interviews and convincing recruiters that you have that contextual knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that's something that people don't think about when you're when they're going through career transitions. It's not just about the skills. And in fact, based on my experience and what I've seen with a lot of my clients, um, you know, I've, I've, I have, for example, a doctor, right, who became a product manager um, and she landed a product manager role in a medical organization that allows um, 
basically that that basically sells medical digital products. Yeah. And because she has that domain knowledge, she has that relatability. There has to be a common thread when it comes to transitioning into careers. Maybe if you went into an event sort of management, um, basically, um, how do I say this? An event management organization um, that builds digital products, mm -hmm. um, that could actually make sense right? And the company will see that there is a common thread. So the domain is the same, but you're changing the role. Yeah. Um, that could be a possibility. Um, or how people navigate pivots is they um, stay within the same role and change the industry. It's really hard to change both at the same time. That's what I've noticed. Okay. Um, when I look at your roles, I see like what you've been doing is phenomenal. There's an element of negotiation. There's an element, an element of business development. There's an element of program management. So to me, like slam dunk, you know, it's, I would totally buy that what you've done is program management. Mm. Right. Um, and yes, I, I do see in the comments that there are agile positions in HR, but those are far in between and also because we don't have that context within HR, we go into that same situation where we're pivoting into a different role and we're also pivoting into a different domain. Um, but for me, the common thread is either going into, um, basically you could go into an agile role um, or sorry, you could go into um, an event management domain, keep that the same and then maybe change the role into maybe a scrum master or um, a product owner role, um, or we, we keep the same role, okay? And we can try different industries. And to mm -hmm. me, if I translate that into um, tech world, um, also outside of your world, um, I would look into program management as well. Mm -hmm. Program management is actually a high paying role. You can, mm. you can actually make six figures being a program manager. Mm. So, um, and there is that element of putting structures and organization in place. So I know this is supposed to be branding, um, but I just wanted to take a step back again. So let us pretend that we, that you, you, you are going for a program manager role. Yeah. First thing that I would do is definitely have that in your heading super clear cut um, because that's what recruiters are going to search for. Mm -hmm. So you have agile coach at the moment, right? Um, the thing is um, the roles that you've played did not involve building digital software and having been an agile coach myself, it's going to be hard to believe recruiters are going to find you, but then as they scroll down and they read your roles and responsibilities, or even invite you through a screening interview, um, that's going to be hard to buy. So I would consider um, program manager. You can still have agile in there. You can just call it agile program manager because it showcases your interest in agile, but what you've actually been playing as a role um, to increase your chances of being found. And you can also put event management as well because uh, business development, um, those are things that are related, um, still sort of, somewhat in the same job family and also ways for you to be found. Okay. okay. Um, I, again, advise people when it comes to the banner to reflect it towards what they currently do. So if um, your focus and where you're at right now is with your business, I'm assuming this is your business, right? Yes. Um, create a business page in order to create credibility that this is an actual real business. Because when people see this, like an empty logo, the credibility goes down. Yeah. How you do that, and I'm gonna quickly demonstrate on my page, because obviously I can't access your page, is here where your logo is, where it says work, I would click on that and I would create a company page, okay? Then I would select um, small, medium, large businesses, company. Yeah. I would put in the name of your business, how you want it to be reflected on LinkedIn. It's going to auto-populate and create a URL for you. 
you don't have to put a website. You can if you want. Mm -hmm. um, put in the industry. Um, put in the um, the organization size. Choose the appropriate, um, and then organization type. Um, maybe it is self-employed, maybe sole proprietor, uh, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. um, the big thing is the logo. You can create a very simple logo in Canva and plop it in. I actually have a logo already. So. Wonderful. So plop that in yeah. to, you know, create more credibility because this is a real company and people need to see that. Um, right. So that's what I would do. Great. Thank okay. you. That's another tidbit. Um, Scrum Master and Principal Event Director. Um, again, you know, it, it is going to be a little bit difficult for people to understand that you were playing the role of a Scrum Master because there was no digital stuff involved. Maybe try Agile Program Manager instead. That, to me, would be more believable. Um, and, um, yeah, that, that's what I would do. Okay. In this case, because this is your company, you can call yourself anything you want, right? Because this is your company. But for other companies, for background check purposes, you need to have the actual title on the contract because when they do the background checks, you don't want to deal with issues. So right. I generally tell people, put the actual title that's on paper mm -hmm. and then the vertical line and the unofficial hat you wore. Again, making the assumption because I work with people for sometimes two weeks to figure out what their ideal job is, but I'm totally making a hypothesis here for the purposes of this exercise. Assuming that program management is truly what is the right fit for you, um, you need to make it consistent. It needs to be repeated throughout. It can't be like um, scrum master here and program manager there and some other project manager and instructional facilitator. It needs to be consistently um, throughout across the board. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that even though you were an instructional facilitator here, you were still um, managing projects. Yeah. You were still yeah. leading. You were still organizing. So make sure that you reflect that through the vertical line. So uh -huh. if the official title is instructional facilitator, put a vertical line and put in uh, project manager or program manager, uh -huh. um, whatever you you see available. Okay, so those are my high level tips. Ooh, the other thing is remove the dates from your university degree um, just to eliminate biases around ageism. Um, again, ageism can go both ways. It can go like you're too young, you're too old, right? Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Um, I just, I have it removed from my profile. I encourage everyone to remove it. You don't want hiring managers and recruiters to calculate your age and form biases. It is unfortunately normal human behavior bias. Mm -hmm. So I just people on the safe side, remove it. Got it. Cool. So, oh, photo. Let's talk about photo. Um, I would make your face square to the camera to show more executive presence. That's my recommendation. Head not tilted, straight and square to the camera. Gorgeous smile, but just the position of your face, it'll mm -hmm. make a difference. You also, I like that. You, you are making eye contact, but just the position of your face and your face being square to the camera, um, that's important. Makes sense. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Um, I do have one quick question. Would you leave the dates on certifications since you take you, since you suggested leave the dates of the um, education? I think the certifications are fine, although they will connect the dots and see that you recently um, got your Scrum Master certification, and then they will make assumptions around, you know, how experienced you are. By the way, LinkedIn user, I totally disagree about certifications being essential. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, sorry to kind of call that out, but um, I have clients who do not have certifications. And I mean, one of my clients doesn't have a certification in product management at all and landed at Amazon. I also have people in the other extreme who have an alphabet soup of certifications and have trouble finding a job. Mm -hmm. It really is about hitting it on the nail when it comes to recruiters and hiring managers. In fact, I even have a client who doesn't have a degree. Talk about that. And he landed an agile mentor role. So certifications are not about getting you basically um, a job. Certifications is a way to learn. Some people learn well when they attend a class. Some people learn well um, when they read books. Some people are great at self-guiding themselves. I have clients who are great at just reading books and articles and they get the knowledge. So just find something in alignment with your own learning style, but don't overly rely on certifications. Um, in fact, you know, learn how to sell yourself. Okay, wonderful. I hope this was useful yeah. for you. Yeah. But very well, it was. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Okay, putting you back in backstage. Um, there we go. And um, going back to just me. Okay, black and white. Um, before we before I bring anyone backstage, yeah. Um, here's the thing about black and white. Actually, yes, that's a good, great point that I totally missed. Um, Nosa. Um, I would I would have the the photo in color, not black and white. Um, just just from a perspective of you want um, basically um, recruiters to just see how you are, right? And so the color does. Uh, I think it, it it just creates a different feeling. So I would definitely find a color photo for sure. And that brings me to the point when I see people who have these more um, cartoonish, you know, uh, I, I see that a lot with my creatives. They have a cartoonish sort of image. Um, remember, this is not your portfolio. This is a way to sort of attract hiring managers to want to basically click, you know, on you when you come across in the search results. And to me, if I see a photo that represents an actual human being, that gives me a glimpse of what they're like, if they're easy to work with, I'm more likely to click on them. Okay. So that's my rationale around photos. Okay. Who wants to go next? <laughs> Unmute yourself if you want to go next and you're backstage. Kevin, I see that you unmuted yourself, but for some reason, oh yeah, that's right. I can't hear you. Okay, I'm bringing you, I'm adding you to the stream. There you are, wonderful. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome, awesome. Okay, beautiful. Why don't you drop your LinkedIn URL so that we can uh, dissect it? All right. Oh, I dropped it in the private chat. i um, not okay. sure if you can see that one. Uh, I, I do, I do. Um, yes, I see it here. Let me just copy and paste it. Okay. So what are you going for, Kevin? So I am leaving, retiring from the military here in about uh, it's nine months. So I am going for uh, agile lead, agile coach, uh, scrum master um, arena. Uh, I am transferring from being a firefighter in the military to something totally different. Um, My goodness. But I, I had three years as a leadership instructor where I kind of connected the dots because my father is actually a scrum master wow. for the past 20 years. And when I was a leadership uh, instructor, he's kind of connecting the dots and saying, you're kind of doing agile and uh, kind of got into it. And that's something that I want to do when I get out. That's amazing. You remind me of one of my clients, Brandon. He was in the military as well. And he um, went from the military to a customer success role. And then he landed Scrum Master. So totally nice. possible. 
Nice. Um, tell me a little bit about your exposure to working with development teams. So earlier this year, after I got my PSM one, I uh, was able to uh, jump on a volunteer project with Pearson View um, to build an LMS system for job searching for um, people who don't have the access to do that. So, um, and it was a month long, a little over a month long, and it was fun. We, uh, it was a bunch of newer scrum masters who were looking to get into the space. And um, we had the awesome opportunity from Sonia Volick and Chris Harrison. And they, they brought us on and mm -hmm. we were able to talk through agile concepts and scrum concepts and um, get work complete, which was fun. It was, we I had a great team. So that's my only exposure for that kind of um, kind of back end, front end kind of changing, um, I guess, IT realm kind of stuff. That's that's a really good project. So um, in in what capacity, technically on paper, were you a contractor? Um, was this a passion project? Um, what was the situation there? So it was a volunteer project, kind of passion. Oh, no. um, yeah. And why only two months? Like, what? What? Why did? Why did it stop? So we had uh, opportunity. Some people have uh, other jobs, and that's all they could vol volunteer for. And we got really close to the end to finalizing our um, project. Um, I think there was just some later cleanup stuff that needed to be done where the product owner was able to do himself. So uh, we, we pretty much completed the project. What the um, what the company owner wanted, okay. what, the, what that stakeholder wanted us to complete. Gotcha. Is there an opportunity for you to look for more of those pro bono projects? So awesome opportunity is, well, with the skill bridge that the military offers, um, I'm able to uh, do six months that where I'm getting paid by the military to step into something like that. The trouble is finding uh, companies uh, that direct skill bridge towards being a scrum master or an agile lead through a, uh, IT company. Um, I've had a couple interviews already, just haven't heard anything back uh, because I'm not eligible actually to start till the 4th of April. So it's a little far out and uh, I'm just making sure, hopefully I'm dotting my I's, crossing my T's to make sure I can end up in this space. Okay. Um, is there opportunity for you to um, maybe um, explore startups, right? Explore startups um, who are, you know, needing help, um, and and maybe is there restriction in in the program around what type of companies that you sh you can help or reach out to, or it doesn't matter. Yes, they have to get approved, and it takes roughly about 90 days to get approved. Um, and they have to have like a training program that uh, kind of integrates me into the company and they don't have to pay me, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But um, to get that uh, approved, it's 90 days. So it's really hard to get in to that. But I'm hoping I'm kind of getting in, talking to companies early enough to where they can get approved if they're interested in that kind of thing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So what is the what is the bottleneck in terms of approve uh, getting approved? You need to get some kind of offer from an organization or what's the deal? Uh, they have to apply through the SkillBridge website and create a training program. Okay. Um, and, it, and they have to look at it and the military takes their time. OK, so it sounds like there's a little bit of a process you know, that, that needs to, that the company needs to go through, which, which may um, maybe create hesitation for the company to get involved. Um, is there an opportunity for you to do this on your own until you get to the point where you built a portfolio that is big enough to make it enticing for companies to be like, oh my God, this guy's a steal. Uh, so 
I've been doing small little things like my certifications in that uh, volunteer project. I actually had to step away from another volunteer project um, because of my job. Hmm. So like um, I still have to perform my job uh, and until I get approved for SkillBridge, which I can't start till the 4th of April. So I have that still. I can volunteer, but I can't kind of be like all in. Kind okay. Of. Well, there's nothing wrong with, you know, sort of um, doing this part time. It doesn't have to be a full time thing, but I definitely encourage you. I mean, I'm going to share my screen here so that everyone can see and so that you can also see. Um, where is my screen? Oh, there we go. I'm just going to remove this and then put that back in. Okay. Yeah. So I think this is gold, right? And I think that it is a shame that this is at the bottom because the first thing that recruiters are going to see is, is your work here, which is amazing work, right? A lot of respect, but at the same time, if you are going, if you are wanting to step into the scrum space, you got to have what is the most relevant at the top. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a secret tidbit that I do for my transitioners who did a lot of pro bono work that is relevant to the space that they're trying to get into. Okay. Um, obviously, you did not work for the company full time. This is pro bono. So technically, you went in as a consultant. You went in as your own company. And so I actually think what you could do is put your um, create a business page for yourself, similar to, um, how I taught NOSA. So again, go into me, uh, go into work, create a company page, right? Um, mm -hmm. click on company and you can put in your first name, last name. You can even call, say your first name, consulting, um, whatever you want to say. Okay? okay. Um, you need to create a company page for yourself. Um, the first time that you started sort of providing advisory scrum master work on a consultant basis is August, 2022. So that's your start date. And this should be present, not September, 2022. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start um, basically bundling up all of the different projects as a consultant, you go in as a scrum master or an agile consultant, providing advisory pro bono, hey, look, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you get paid or not. That's real actual experience. You're providing value to companies. So why not add that in your resume? And so August, 2022 to present, and then put in the different projects basically. So um, let's see here. This is your name. This is gonna be agile consultant. Okay, um, not developer, you are not a developer, or you don't, even if you were taking on development tasks, that's not how you want to brand yourself. You don't want to confuse recruiters, right? right? So just be direct, scrum master, or even agile consultant, that's actually more relevant, or maybe actually agile consultant, vertical line, scrum master, right? So you can hit all the keywords, um, and then, you know, add the multiple roles within your um, basically consulting gig or consulting company. Okay. Um, that's how I would bundle it. And um, do more of this because this is great. This is what's going to help you get in. Because here's the deal. A lot of people think, oh, I just can fake my way and put a bunch of titles. I'll get an interview. But what's going to happen when you go to the interview? You're going to get caught, right? So, um the client that I was talking to you about, Brandon, he shadowed a scrum master for an entire year pro bono. Wow. That's how he was able to pivot. You need hands-on experience, everyone. You can't just get a whole bunch of certifications and convince hiring managers that you're ready to play these roles. You need hands-on experience. So you got to think outside of the box. You can either take on additional responsibility in your current organization you don't need to have the title to volunteer within your organization or take on additional responsibility. Or you can go out and seek 
charity organizations, um, startups, and ask them if they need help and build something tangible for them so that you can talk about it in interviews, okay? So that's a big tip that I'm gonna give you all. Um, and in your case, if you are doing this pro bono, that's considered consulting, that's considered part of your company, you are the company, and you can bundle that up. And from a resume perspective, let's say down the line, you're still taking on consulting gigs to like March, or April next year, or even August next year, this no longer becomes two months. This is a year. And you don't want a bunch of disconnected roles that are two month, one month, three month, because that's gonna scare recruiters and see you as jumping around. So I would bundle it all together under your name. And then just put down basically the different um, pro bono initiatives as projects under your company. That's how I would do it. Okay. That's like my magic. That's amazing. That's good. Wonderful. All right, my friend. Um, and you could also, instead of agile lead, remember they're not gonna, they're not gonna, um, search on agile lead. I would actually put in, um, you know, agile consultant, vertical line scrum master. Um, as part of your head heading along with the other official heading that you have. Um, I'm not a huge fan when people add all of this verbiage because at the end of the day, um, it's what comes up in the search, what uh, recruiters search on. You can elaborate on some of these things in your about section, um, um, but I would do that. Be a beast today. I would um, have, because this is your, your company, you know, think about building your own company brand. Think of yourself as a company that's providing agile services. That's it. I'm declaring this as of today. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Kevin Agile Consulting Company comes to birth. And right. we are going to design a Canva, you know, banner that reflects that. Okay. okay. Um, create a logo. Um, maybe have like a mission statement or something that is agile related. I don't know, but that instead of be a beast today, because when a recruiter who's looking for a scrum master role sees be a beast today, I mean, that doesn't say anything to us, right? right. Versus, oh, right off the bat, this person is passionate about agile. Oh, he offers agile consulting services to companies. Yes, I'm going to contact them, right? Yeah. Um, so that's definitely it. Increase your connections to more than 501 so that you increase your chances of being in the search result. Um, large blurb about ourselves. Um, not a large blurb, but um, you need to definitely have um, basically a high level. Like, again, I invite you all to look at the roles and responsibilities of job postings. Um, the formula in many cases is, um, I would not say, hello, my name is Kevin Ferguson, because um, that's just real estate that you could save and, and recruiters have a short attention span. They already know your name is Kevin from your LinkedIn profile. I would just start right off the, right off the bat. Um, I am a, um, you know, agile consultant and you know, um, bringing in your military um, chief of training, assistant of chief of training at the United States of uh, Air Force. Um, I provide, you know, consulting services, you know, to let's say startups and, and smaller organization, you know, talk a little bit about your, your agile knowledge. Okay. Um, because, you know, the first thing I'm, I want to see here is your agile knowledge. Um, I mean, if I show you guys, for example, an, an, an example of an about me section for one of my clients here, um, if we click on it and she landed a product manager role as well as went through a pivot, super short and sweet. The first sentence is actually about her company to show that she's proud of being where she's at. And, and even when she was looking, um, we still had that first sentence um, to show that she's passively looking. Um, and then we start with directly, I'm a product manager. Okay, great. Because if you think about it, the recruiters, 
they're going to ask, is this person a product manager? Is this person a scrum master? So let them know that you're playing that role. And right away, you want to tell them how many years of experience you have, right? And then we talk in the language of the avatar, the things that are characteristic of a product manager driving product development through the entire life cycle from ideation, design, and development, super to the point, not too much about the personality. Because remember, they're going in, they're quickly scanning this to determine whether they should keep scrolling. So you want to be straight to the point, giving them exactly what they're looking for. Um, technical skills. What are the tools that people look for in, in Scrum Masters and Agile Coaches? Jira, um, Rally, um, Basecamp, um, Confluence, right? Go on job postings and look at the tools they look for. And even if you've never used these tools, learn how to use them, right? So yeah. I would I would add a technical section for you and I would add a specialty section. The specialty section, and some of you may or may not have gotten my newsletter. If you haven't, DM me and I'll send it to you because I go through this in detail. The specialty section should contain keywords that are relevant to your skill set in the profession profession you're trying to get into right so things around um, scrum ceremonies for you that should be in there for my client because it's product management we talk about backlog refinement we talk about road mapping we talk about product metrics um, in your case it's going to be retro facilitating retrospectives um, facilitating uh, stand-ups um, you know, we're going to have Agile, we're going to have Scrum, we're going to have Kanban, you know, we're going to have all of those buzzwords from job postings so that when a recruiter searches on these things, oh, I'm looking for someone who is a Scrum master and knows Kanban, right? They're going to pick it up from the About Me section. Cool. So that hopefully it's a very long answer to the question around, should we write a large blurb about ourselves? Um, but but um, I, in my course, you know, I dial in into the step-by-step -step process of how to put that together. But that, that was like my, I guess, five minute summary. Hopefully it's helpful. And, if, and again, if you don't have my newsletter, let me know, DM me on LinkedIn and so that you can subscribe to it and so that you can get a lot of this information as well. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to put you backstage again. Uh, thank you again for thank volunteering. You. I appreciate that it. That was thank you. amazing. All right, everyone. This was a lot of fun. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. I wish I could, I, I wish I was able to look through every single person's profile, but unfortunately we are out of time. Um, however, you know, keep joining these LinkedIn lives because there's going to be a lot of value. And also I will definitely, um, if you haven't received my LinkedIn guide, then, then DM me on LinkedIn, we can send it to you. Um, and if you would like to chat with me about my uh, program and my course that will help give you the A to Z from figuring out your ideal job all the way to landing to the job you love, uh, feel free to book a virtual coffee with me. Um, you can find the link on nadabohendi.com and book a free career diagnosis. Wonderful. Super exciting. Um, keep following me. I will send you lots of tips. I hope you all have a wonderful night. Uh, thank you for providing me the opportunity to share with you my knowledge. Um, and thank you for volunteering to use yourself as case studies <laughs> so that everyone learns. Okay, everyone, have a wonderful night and happy Thanksgiving to my U.S. Uh, friends. Okay, bye.